Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope you've all been having a really good week so far. We skipped last week because of Thanksgiving, which always yeah. feels odd. And I know people take time off for holidays and vacations and such, but it always feels weird when we get off schedule. So anyway, we took the recap off because we typically film those on Thursdays and that's when Thanksgiving is. It was really nice though. We could have done it. It's just a little bit of a push because if we would have filmed it on Friday, then Ken would have had to like edit it really quick. And mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of nice around the holidays to just go a little just like relax a little chill. bit yeah. yeah it was really nice uh and it's raining it is pouring rain today like, i wonder do you think we actually needed to water the evergreens in now that we got this rain well it makes me feel better that we did it's not hurting yeah. anything for sure but all the bulbs we've planted i haven't irrigated a single one of those i just rely mostly on winter irrigation winter rain and yeah. such bringing them up so it is really nice. It's kind of, I've got a big decorating project I'm working on right now though, and I was gonna do that today. It's kind of like putting that on the back burner because I don't want to haul supplies around in the rain. So I do have a cheesecake in the oven instead, which I need to go check on in 50 minutes to be precise. So anyway, today's video is sponsored by Gardner's Supply Company, which I will talk about here in a minute. For now, let's just jump into the videos from this past week. The first one was decking out the pots around the Hartley for Christmas. I used a lot of stuff in those pots. Yeah, they look so good though. They do look pretty. Um, and I didn't, I, I don't know, I had kind of a vision of what I wanted to do. I did them a little bit differently than I normally do containers. I usually have a little bit more of a unstructured, I guess, look, but I've been doing a lot of layers this mm -hmm. year and it's just good. something more tidy about it. But I did use a lot of stuff. So we got flame willow branches out of our own garden, which was really fun. And then I had a box full of myrtle, which hasn't held like a boxwood or a holly leaf wood. Um, it's kind of like done a little twist with the mm. freeze, but it's still green. So unless you get right up on it. So, I mean, there's my experience, I guess, with the myrtle. It was the first time for me. And it has seeded eucalyptus and noble fir boughs and lights and magnolia all the things nice so many layers uh flora said what's the trick to getting stone pots that don't fall apart with the freeze thaw i don't know what the what live the in an area where it doesn't freeze oh, thaw yeah as easy bad. easy erin <laughs> that's you a great them? tip i'm sure you can empty and would, cover them it would probably be the like the best being the best steward of your things would be to do that i don't do that um we order most of our concrete through uh unique stone and henry studio we garden in a zone six formerly zone five um, and I've never had a problem with anything cracking and I plant stuff in them and just let them be out for the winter. Except for fountains. Yes. If, uh, we've had some issues with right. fountains, just collecting water and freezing. And it was because I didn't properly winterize the fountain, which basically means just take the plug out of the bottom. So the water yeah. has a chance to escape. And I've totally forgot. I blame being pregnant with Samantha on that completely. It's a super Isn't bad Isn't that a excuse. thing? Don't people blame like pregnancy brain or something? I guess so. Yeah. Say? Yeah. Well, I was physically like unwell yeah. <laughs> at that point. So I kind of let a lot of things go. But anyway, so we did have that fountain bowl crack. Um, but typically with containers, we don't have that issue. Audrey said, I just love watching the kitties trying to get your attention. Sometimes I'm like, okay, you guys have got to go. Like get away from me for yeah. a minute. A lot of time when I'm standing there, I'm talking to you guys and I've got a camera in my hand and I'm just like kind of stationary for a minute because I'm explaining something. Cheddar is at my feet going like figure eights around my legs and I'm like Ugh! I'm like kind of trying to like scoot them away because it's so distracting so sometimes when I'm talking to you I'm totally doing that I'm totally trying to scoot them out of the way <laughs> but you feel like you're gonna trip too like if you take yeah, a step you, right. feel like you don't want to step on him obviously. yeah oh my goodness um are you getting a sore throat or is it just me okay so the whole household got a cold like two weeks ago not me you didn't get it um I there was like one day where I felt kind of like that's right mm. But it never turned into anything. It's so atypical because usually you're the one who yeah. gets it and I'm fine. And I just, and I don't get sick very often. There was one day where I was just like, I, did I still film? You rarely let sickness affect you. I think I still filmed. I feel like you f you feel worse when, when you have I to do. like lay up in yeah. bed or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I have to be like. So you'll just Whoa. move anyway. Yeah. But that was a that was a bad day. But I feel like I feel great now, but I still have the congestion thing mm. and you can probably still even hear it right now. Like I just like I'm still socked in, but yeah, just lingering for a little while. 
Uh, Queenie said, stunningly beautiful, thank you. How long will they, they last? I uh, loved the cats flexing themselves. Uh, they last through the winter months for us. Uh, I did water them in, not to really keep them fresh, mo mostly just to keep them in place so they freeze together. Um, you can spray them with the wilt stop. I don't know why I want to call it wilt proof. Wilt stop. I think wilt proof is an actual. Is that uh, a thing? Yeah, I think there's wilt it's stop. Like and stuck wilt in my proof. brain. I think uh, wilt stop is bonide and wilt proof is some other. Okay, company. so wilt stop is what we have. It's a pine resin. It doesn't. It's like kind of strong smelling, very pine smelling, uh, and you can spray that on greens. It does help tremendously, and I kind of wish I would have done that with the myrtle. At least one pot mm -hmm. to uh, just test to see how it did, but I completely forgot that step. Anyway, that does help quite a, quite a lot. But either way, I mean, we're not usually right up on containers looking at them through the winter. It's kind of like at a glance or just walking by quickly. And so even if I don't get to that step, they stay pretty nice for the winter months. Mark Antoine said, do you have your Christmas lights on a timer or do you turn them on every night? They are on a timer, uh, which I think I will be discussing our Christmas light display at the very end. That was the last video we put up uh, before we filmed this video. Um, so they go on at dusk desk hmm? and then they turn off at about 9 30 we have them go for four hours every night and then they turn off which it's weird because it it does look so much darker like you realize yeah. how dark it is out there when you don't have them on yeah it, i kind of i mean maybe it's just because this year we have so many lights but i like it when they're on i also like it when they turn off yeah. And it, it's you like know, a reprieve. it probably would get expensive if we did like dawn to dusk because in the past I've done that all night where they long. just stay on all night long. Well, we figured, you know, like nobody, if they turn off at 930, I don't think a lot of families are out driving in their cars after 930. Yeah. I think my kids are going to bed and things. Um, and then, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how many people would actually be driving around looking at them late, late or right. in the middle of the night. Sure. Uh, Peggy said, every now and then, could you let us know how much your creations cost? Not on this one. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I mentioned that in these containers, since I bought a lot of the greens, it adds up fast. Um, I ordered through, thankfully, and I know that it's kind of cheating for me, but through Andrews, through my parents' garden center, I'm able to order a lot of those greens in at wholesale cost. Um, so we ordered through a wholesale florist to get most of it, and then I ordered the Noble for tips bows through my parents garden center um but even then what, like, what do you think like retail cost oh i don't even know i don't even mm -mm. <laughs> no i don't even want to know that's why foraging and growing things in your gardens is so nice and yeah. it's it's just one of those things that i want to do more of that in fact i've been thinking about like this field out here what could we do in here yeah and those flame willows that we gathered the stems from we can plant those out there and have like a rotation of every other year i sure. can cut some of them down for for projects but i'm like oh it would be nice to like have a row like a row crops out there mm -hmm. yellow twig dogwoods right. red twig dogwoods you know boxwood just for cutting right you know all those things so that because we know we want to do this every single year wouldn't it be nice to be able to go and then provide friends and family and you know other sure. people with some of those things too so that it's not a huge cost um, but we also go out to the hills every once in a while and forage. We've shared that with you before to keep costs down. Um, so yeah, look I'm, up your local area. Make sure that's okay. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked about that too. In uh, the forest where we go, you can go out there and gather. I can't remember the wording I for it. I think it had said something about like um, for personal use and. Um, it's not to gather to sell. It's not to gather to sell. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. And I think it's, you know, like everything else, it's like everything in moderation. Yeah. You know, like one year we went up there and um, they had just cut down because a lot of the areas are overgrown. Oh, yeah. And so they have to go through and actually cut them down. Mm -hmm. And one year they're just like they were all laying on the road. We didn't That's have to cut a single thing. We just loaded stuff up. Mm -hmm. So it was basically like debris they were going to have to pick up anyway. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you can just try to be sensible and, you know, don't ruin anything. Yeah be reasonable and nobody's ever going to mess with you. Yeah. I mean, we don't even, we'll like fill up the bed of our truck. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and that one year, so they take this huge blade along the roads and they just run, I've seen videos of it before and they just run this huge blade just to like clear the roadway. Right. And I remember that year in particular, and I think I was pregnant with Samantha that hmm. year. And I, I remember feeling like it was a gift. Yeah. Like this is a gift. I don't have to go tromping through the forest yeah. <laughs> for these branches because a lot of them are are high you know um well, i don't know if wildlife like takes care of that or what but mm -hmm. a lot of the branches are high so when you have all these pine fresh pine branches just sitting on the side of the road uh, i feel like we were doing them a favor by cleaning yeah, up a right. few we of were, them actually that year but if somebody that year wanted to go collect branches 
to like distribute, that yeah. would have been the year. Right. I don't know if you could get with somebody at like f the BLM or something and be like, can you just tell us when you right. are doing they your probably pruning? would tell you. Probably. Unless they didn't want you uh, like, you know. Telling or, or being in their way. In, I don't know. Yeah, yeah who knows. Uh, Mukta said, what a simple yet beautiful arrangement. The lights in the ar arrangement is great. Never thought of that. Does anyone know if these are unique stone urns? And if so, what color are they? It looks like they're aged stone. You are absolutely correct. I order all of our concrete from everywhere in natural colors. So the aged stone is just kind of that natural concrete color. We have such hard water. In fact, we had it tested this week. Yeah. What did he say it was? So oh, what's the scale? Yeah. Well, I don't know what the scale is, but it, it uh, tested at a 18 hardness or 13 hardness. Whatever that is. It was hard. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah. We get it in the natural color because the hard water doesn't show up quite as badly on it. You know, if it was a darker stain, which I think is beautiful, but if it was a darker stain, we could never do that. I would be staining that fountain like five, six times a year just to keep up the appearance of it. And I don't want that maintenance. And those are uh, unique stone. The garden, they say jardinier. I asked mm -hmm. them how to pronounce it, and that's how they said to pronounce it. So I feel like that's wrong, though. I feel like the J no. needs to be like a ha. Huh. Yeah. No, it is Heart. a J. Jardinier. J Jardinier. And it's a 26 or a 31 inch diameter. I think those are the two sizes and I can never remember which one it is. It's a big pot. Simply Bloom said, being that it's a flower wholesaler, can anyone buy from them or do you have to have a business? You do have to buy a business um, in this case. Have a business. Or have a business. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can order through your local florist a lot of times. Um, ours is happy to do it. And then my parents set up an account with them years and years ago because we do a lot of these kinds of things. So I suppose anybody could just register a business, right? Like you, you, you could just pay the, the registry fee to, uh -huh. you know, form an LLC. Um, and then you, you'd get a tax ID number. That's usually, you know, because I've set up accounts with... Uh, various companies before mm -hmm. it's usually all they request is a tax id number uh -huh. um and i think in our state it costs like 50 bucks mm -hmm. to register your business so that might be worth it in the end <laughs> I, I think you know as long yeah. as you're meeting whatever minimums they have mm -hmm. it's not that hard to set up a you know a business mm -hmm. to buy stuff like that oh boy i don't know that i would go to that effort yeah if it was like me by myself yeah you gotta you know save the 50 bucks mm -hmm. gotta be cheaper than yeah but that. Seated in Texas said, what will two buckets of water do to the tulip bulbs? Nothing. Keep them nice and, and hydrated. We water everything every two to three weeks unless we're getting like this huge irrigating rain. We put it on the schedule every two to three weeks to water any containerized items out in the garden just so that they don't freeze dry um, because that will kill them faster than anything else here in our area. We don't deal with things usually rotting, any of that business. Also, it kind of keeps the squirrels out. I've been noticing that. We don't have as much digging activity like we've had a little bit more of that as of late now that we have a little bit more of a developed space um once those containers are frozen blocks of ice those squirrels can't get to my bulbs it's awesome okay thank you to gardener supply for supporting us through sponsoring this video we have been using gardener supply stuff for a long time in fact it was before we even had Benjamin. We had the opportunity to fly you were out. Pregnant with Benjamin. At the I was time. pregnant with Benjamin. Yeah. yeah, we told the gal. Yeah. Because they were gonna, they were trying to give me hard cider, and I was like, oh. Oh I, yeah, that's right. I, I can't. Like they surprised us bunch of beautiful stuff in our room. Right. I couldn't partake because, and so I told her, um, and that was maybe like a month or two before we even announced. Sure. Yeah. Announced it. It was early. Anyway, we had the opportunity to go out and visit their headquarters in Vermont. It was such a fun trip. And they have physical garden center locations, like three. Yeah. At that point, we were able to visit those. It was such a fun trip. Um, and they really do, like their name describes their company. I mean, Gardner Supply, they've got all, they've got everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. I mean, practical stuff, you know, your tools and um, raised bed supplies, grow lights. This has been like, if I did a video that was game changing things for my gardening experience, I think a lot of things that I could include in that video would co have come from gardener supply. So these are the three tier sunlight gardens, uh, grow light gardens. Mm -hmm. And the bamboo LED grow light gardens, that was my first experience with the high output LED lights that they have. You don't have to raise and lower for seedlings. Oh, the other thing, the seed, the grow ease seed starter kits. So there are these 24 cell, 
seed starting trays that have a self-watering reservoir below them. I've showed you like a hundred times in yeah. videos. That was a major game changer for me. Uh, I had the best experience. In fact, this last year I tried growing in a lot of bigger trays and I just didn't have the success that I did in those like I do in the self-watering. I don't know why. Like there's something magic about yeah. those. But they also have a lot of pretty things too. The Panacea Giant wall trellis if i might get the names wrong because it's been a while we've had those trellis up on our wall three of them for four years three or four years yeah and i've loved them from day one and i still love them i've got the um sx square trellis in our raised bed garden to hold up tomatoes but they also are beautiful at the same time uh boy i'm trying to think of all the things in our garden. that copper shingled roof bird feeder you can lift the, the roof off and put black oil sunflower seeds in there and the birds love it and it's beautiful to look at Anyway, we have a lot of stuff from them and they've got like tons of harvest supplies, um, holiday stuff. I could spend a long time. Their website's gardeners.com. I could spend hours and I have on their website looking through things. They just sent out a, a big pot of amaryllis this last week, which I'm excited to watch grow. Anyway, they do have a discount code for you guys, 15% off orders of $99 or more through the end of the year. It's The code is ANSWER22. Mm -hmm. I actually know the code this time. I yeah. never know the code. So anyway, thank you, Gardener Supply, so much for sponsoring this video. Next video, you guys, was making clove orange pomanders with my mom and the kids. That was so fun. I wish that I could attack every, pro not attack, <laughs> approach every project with that sort of like ease it's yeah. such an easy project to do and setting up the nespresso making drinks and having snacks and the kids in and out it just doing that in the flower shed i feel like this is why i wanted the shed yeah and it's also kind of fun that you have it documented too you know mm -hmm. like 20 years from now you'll be able to look back on yeah. that video and kind of like relive it too yeah. so it's kind of special in that way too it really is oh so much fun. And clove orange pomanders are basically just clove studded oranges. They are a wonderful holiday decoration. I have them on our kitchen island. I've burned, so I showed you the um, little centerpiece I made. I burned the candles all the way down. I need to replace them so I can burn them again. It just makes me happy to walk through there and just see the, it smells good and see the, the warm candlelight. Oh, so fun. Susan said, how do you keep the pine from drying out? It just dries out. You can put the wilt stop on it. I don't prefer putting wilt stop on greens that I display inside the house because it is fairly strong smelling. You can't smell it if it's outside, but when it's in a closer quarter area, you can. It's not a bad smell. It's not a, but it's very strong. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's like a piney kind of smell. It's pine, but it's like um, astringent. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? It's just, it's a very mm, forward, pine forward, which I like that smell, like pine trees and stuff, but it's a little bit strong uh in this case i just usually let them dry they don't look bad uh you can replace the greens like every i don't know week or every two weeks maybe just once during the season and it'll keep that fresh eva said do you still have the orange slice wreath that you made previously it was so pretty and i'm wondering if it has held up it has the funny funny thing is ken asked me uh, ken our editor he was over last night getting some stuff to take home and work on and uh he asked me do you still have that orange wreath and i showed him it's still hanging on the mirror and he said that was his favorite crafty project i've ever done hmm. that he's ever wow. edited of all the crafty projects yeah and it was so simple it's so beautiful though i love it and i have it up year round I walk in the rain said i'm still having trouble trying to imagine what it would be like to never have seen a cardinal never have i've lived where they are not around but for the last 30 plus years i see them daily would any wildlife feed on those oranges if they were put outside not really here i think would orioles i've seen one oriole here we mm. used to sell oriole feeders and they always looked like an orange like there was orange slices and that orange color mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's what attracts them i saw one we had a blue macedonian pine in our last garden their townhouse garden and i was inside i happened to look outside and it was perched right on top of the leader mm. i freaked out i went and bought an oriole feeder <laughs> i was like i'm a, i'm Stay. bringing them in and it never came back i never have seen another one ever which is so sad but yeah i i don't know if anything else eats oranges whenever i put those things out they eat the peanut butter and seeds of course uh, they eat the popcorn they sometimes will touch the cranberries a bit if they're desperate but oranges are always left. They, they're pretty though. And mm. I like to have them out because they're bright. And I do think that maybe the bright color draws interest. Sure. 
Uh, Debbie said, I love the copper tray. Can you tell us where you got it? I got that one at Marshall's. I think it was last Christmas season. Whenever I find something that really strikes me, I will pick it up because it's so nice to have those supplies on hand. I was just talking to your mom though, and I told her I need to figure out some kind of like a decor inventory system that has pictures. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we, we box up this Christmas stuff and I have a pretty good idea of what I have, but there are some things I just, I can't remember. And it would be so nice just to have like a spreadsheet, like this Christmas tote number one, Christmas tote number two. So when I'm ready to do a specific tree, I can be like, I need totes three and four. Right. I can't even imagine that kind of an organized life. You can get copper trays from Garner Supply. <laughs> they yeah. have copper plant trays. I think there's a 12 inch one. They're real pretty. I have those too. They're they're really nice, and they have little stands. Uh, I think that you can go that go with them. Ingrid said, "Question: What type and brand of heater did you install in the shed?" I'm gonna have to ask Eddie. I don't know. I looked though. I looked underneath. I tried to see if there was any brand information. I looked online, and it seems like they're all pretty generic. Really? Like I don't know that there's. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like. They're kind of all the same. So, and ours isn't really special. It's just. It wasn't expensive. No, That's why I decided to do it. Cause he was like, your walls are open. It would add a couple hundred extra dollars yeah, to if it. You just I'm go like, to Amazon oh, and it. type in like in wall heater. Uh huh. You don't I need mean, any venting. It's just stuck in there. I mean, yeah. I think it's in a specific box, but. Yeah. 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 I'm sure there's like a housing mm-hmm. around it, but. Pat said, may I ask why you don't, you don't park the gator closer to the shed and make it easier to move things? Because we we um, planted the grass on the side right there, um, and it's just, it goes right in front of the opening. And so we're trying, especially when it's freezing outside, it's real bad to drive on your grass. Um, in fact, the path that leads from the driveway all the way up to the cut flower shed, we've got some pretty good tractor tire and gator tire marks in that because we were trucking stuff over to the dahlias to... Um, cover them up to mulch them up Uh, so it'll bounce from that but Mm -hmm. you can definitely see where there's tracks so in the winter time we have to be very careful about what is driven on and we try not to walk across grass too much or in a specific path you know how the carpet gets traffic patterns grass gets it too if you do it too much so anyway that's why i park over there because i'm trying to that baby grass over there i don't want to to mess it up. West Bay said love this channel always one request would you consider addressing us as everyone instead of guys hey everyone Hey, no. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Nope. <laughs> okay, next video is watering in winter and filling bird feeders. Ashley, oh, what did I do in that? I watered the big trees. Yeah. And then we filled up the the black oil sunflower seed, the copper shingled roof bird feeder, and then the two up in our crab apple tree, and the birds just loved it. And then I got some real crummy footage with my phone, and Aaron was like, I'm going to go put the good camera out. <laughs> and he got some beautiful footage of birds eating. He put it on our highlight, on this channel. Yeah. Um, so it's just like 30 minutes of birds eating at the feeder. I could just sit there, and the comments on that video is hilarious. Like, this is cat TV. Right. <laughs> my cat attacked the TV. Uh, but... You can see that the birds were loving it. Uh, And I just went over, like in terms of watering, went over the importance of making sure things are well watered going into winter and with all these big trees that are a huge investment in our garden and now a huge part of the infrastructure. um, We want to treat them treat them right. Ashley said, love the video. Just curious if you have issues with cheddar and Russell snacking on the birds. If so, what do you do? I've never seen our birds or our cats go after the birds. I've seen cheddar with a mouse like a couple times. Mm -hmm. They're well-fed cats. I mean, I know that they still have hunting instinct and all of that, but I don't think it's I don't feel like ours do have hunting instinct. I don't think Russell does. I've never seen Russell hunt anything except for cheddar and his own tail. Right. He's such a nerd. Uh, Grasshoppers. Yeah. Oh, I remember my mom and dad were here at one t- at one point, and we were looking out over the raw field. We hadn't done anything to it yet, and there was still the pasture grass. And we saw Russell. We saw a, a grasshopper fly up out of the grass, and Russell jumped like five feet up in the air, like his back legs kind of like twisted up in the air. And my mom was like, "What is wrong with your cat?" Yeah. <laughs> Russell's he's just funny. Karen said, love all those trees you've planted. Any chance we will see you decorating a tree in your home this year or maybe a tour? I was thinking that maybe we could do a tour of the trees. I did. I don't think you guys have seen it yet once this one goes up, but I just got the Hartley tree done and it's gorgeous. I love it. I wish that you guys could be standing there though. Like, I feel like the camera just doesn't capture the magic of, yeah. you know, what it feels like to stand there. And it definitely, I sent my mom a little video. I'm like, it's not picking up half the ornaments on this tree. Right. She goes, no, it's really not, but it's still really pretty. Um, when you're standing there, you can see, I did a lot of, uh, you'll see. 
<laughs> it's real pretty. I love it. But I was thinking an inside tour. I've got um, one, two, three, four trees set up this year. Still have a few surfaces I want to do. Um, maybe we could take a look at those. Uh, Audrey said, how long does it take for the evergreens to settle in? Well, I don't know. Did he tell you? Because like the Norway we had... I showed the Norway and the blue, I don't know if I showed the blue spruce, but the Norway we had installed in May that I showed mm -hmm. put on a ton of growth. So it apparently has rooted. Yeah. Although some of that probably is just energy stored up from, Maybe. you know, where it was. Yeah. I would think 12 to 24 months and then it's like fully acclimated into its new. You're probably right. Yeah. It takes, takes a minute. For yeah. those roots. Cause to... it's some, um, some of the roots have been chopped. It's just like a great big containerized plant i mean think of it yeah like if you could buy yeah. a giant container at the nursery first year they sleep second year yeah. they creep so third year they leave. yeah probably like third year is when it's really just coming into its own uh -huh. like if if it made it to the third year you know it's staying right okay i gotta check my timer i have a cheesecake did i tell you i have a cheesecake in the <laughs> oven <laughs> okay 23 minutes i don't make cheesecake very often but i've been feeling it i've been wanting cheesecake Patty said, whatever happened with your friend's trees? You said at one point some of the trees they had planted were not doing well. Did we ever figure out what happened to those? No, we never did. Um, the weird thing, though, is that our electrician lost a bunch of trees this last year as well. And mm -hmm. he thinks that they were fertilized incorrectly. You know, how do you prove it? But yeah. he had a guy, you know, I think it was a company, come and fertilize the trees. And just at, like anything that that guy fertilized uh, just got yellow and brown and shriveled what up. What kind of fertilizer did he yeah, use? Yeah, he's like, well, did you, you know, like, is there Roundup in your fertilizer or <laughs> what? What's going you know, on? but how do you prove it? How do mm -hmm. you, you know, because it's like happened early in the spring and, you know, by the time they're dead, it's like late summer. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just the weird a weird part thing. with their, with our friend's trees is that they, they came and got, so we bought a bunch of autumn blaze maples for the lane and didn't end up needing all of them. Mm -hmm. So they came and picked up some from the same lot that ours and ours are doing great. Mm -hmm. We didn't lose a single one. They're all looking beautiful, put on growth. So I, I'm not sure. It, I, I looked at them. It didn't look like they were planted too low. It didn't look like, uh, you know, I couldn't tell. It looked like scorch on the leaves. Mm -hmm. Like it just looked like leaf scorch, but why didn't ours? And, you know, they were watering them, I think. I mean, they thought they were watering them really deeply and right. thoroughly and, you know, who know, who knows sometimes it's always weird when it's a second year issue yeah because it's like they obviously made it through an entire yeah. year so that's the weird part and the, these friends of ours like they're with it like they you know there are they care yeah they care there some are some people, people like that would come into the garden center and be like my plant died it got leaf scorch i'm like well did you water it yeah I did a great job and I could tell like by what they were telling me that it's that's not right. how they were actually treated um, that's not the case in this case so I don't know yeah Connor said would it be worth it for you to add a quick connect to the faucets in the hose link oh it would be so nice no. just for like the winter months if you did because I use the one at the greenhouse mm -hmm. and we know which ones we would need to use for the trees if we could have a quick connect just on those hoses for the winter months it may not be feasible in the summer mm -hmm. when we're using every single faucet it but boy it would be nice well how often are you actually swapping stuff out well right now when we water in the greenhouse because it's heated in there so things need water watering like i don't know every other day there'll be things that need it so we haul that quick connect out or the hose link out of the greenhouse we bring it over here and right. have to put it on the yeah yeah it would be really nice to have ones just on the frost freeze that we use during the winter yeah I don't know. I it just it feels to me like any time that I need to use a hose, there either like is or isn't a quick connect in the right location. So like one side will have a quick connect and the other side won't, and you can't make the connection because you're missing the other side of the quick connect. And then the quick connects are kind of like they don't they get really tight and mm -hmm. you need like a wrench to pull them off. Mm -hmm. So that's my problem with quick connects is that in theory they work. You know, as long as you just have a very set, like, I only use it for these applications. But the second you change it up and need a different hose or whatever, then you're tracking down a wrench to get... How often does that up. actually happen, It though? feels like it's every time for me. Anytime I need to use a hose or anytime I need to swap something out, hmm. it's incorrect. And that's what frustrates me. Hmm. I, I think that it's just worth it to not have a quick connect and just screw it on because at least you can do that with your hands and you never need a wrench and you never need to go find another yeah, tool. Yeah, it is frustrating when something's so tight you can't 
get it I off. I agree with that. Yeah. That, you know what? I love hose links. That's my one complaint though about, um, uh, I think it's like the ho- the side where the water comes out of their deal it spins the like little brass oh, piece spins yeah. and there's not you can't get enough of your hand around it's it to unscrew big it enough. yeah yeah so you need a wrench for that so That's... sometimes our because we use dram wands on the end of our hose link and it's hard if you've got one on there tight mm-hmm. there's no getting it off in fact I broke a dram wand trying really? to get it off yep with your bare hands with my bare hands brute strength Wow. Uh, gardening is my passion, said. Quick question looking for a good water water wand. Should I go with Dram or Gekka? Dram. All the way. All the way. We and- had issues. Uh, well, yeah, we had issues with the Gekka. I actually emailed them several times because we had multiple Gekka wands that leaked. I felt like they were good for a while. Like yeah. I, enj- I liked the spray. I liked the, the yeah. way they sprayed. Um, and I liked how they, they felt. Yeah. But we and went back to And in their dram. defense, they swapped them out. Like yeah. they were, they made it right. You know what I mean? But they're a, pro- is it a pro- proprietary? Like the, um, the connection is not a hose connection. No, it is. I think you're thinking about. No, um, when you have to do the, oops, sorry. When you have to do the um, water wand at the end. Uh, oh, you, the water wand yeah, part is proprietary. Yeah, you can't like swap the, out the, the rose. The, the rose is that at what the end. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the the or the head. Yeah, with dram. The beaker. Beaker. Is that what it's called? Oh, I don't know. Breaker. Breaker. Water breaker. Water breaker. Yeah, there you go. Um, I swap our water breakers at the end of our dram wands uh, all the time because there are ones that have like t- a ton of tiny holes and they do a really soft stream for seed starting for when I'm watering a bunch of seed trays at the same time. Um, and then they've got some in the middle of the road and then they've got like standard ones. And I love the, the ability to be able to do that. And I also only ever use dram wands that have the thumb uh on off yeah, thumb lever. like not the not the not the, the oh geez anything that has makes you do this and then like flip a little silver you know catch at the bottom such a pain um, i like the thumb levers a lot that's what we use down at the garden center and the nurseries too dram wands with the thumb lever the the like what are they called trigger yeah the ones that have the handle that you squeeze they always end up leaking too no matter mm. what brand we have used over time they start to leak from that little connection sure Emily said, how are your chickens doing during the colder weather? They're doing great. We have their coop set up pretty nice. I have a heating plate. It's They're pampered. They are. It's called a cozy coop, I think. And it just raises the ambient temperature just enough under their roost. So underneath where I've got some big branches in there where they roost at night. And it just keeps right underneath their feet a little bit warmer than the out, outer thing. Um, I don't run any other heat in there during the winter wintertime. Uh, they've got a plexiglass lined run Uh, so it keeps them protected from wind and stuff i dump snow in there when it snows they love to mess around in the snow so we give them snow we give them uh, treats all the time the kids love to go in and give them treats we also give them stuff out of our greenhouse stuff out of our garden stuff out of the refrigerator that you know like the i just gave them some broccoli stuff that i had um, cut off of Uh, anyway they're doing really good they molted there for a minute and they looked bad like they look so rough when they're molting but they all look really good now dawn shade said why do you have those ties on the new trees when do you put them on or take them off the stakes Mm -hmm. on the trees will leave them on for one full growing season maybe two maybe two depending on how they're huge trees so you want to make sure that they are good and rooted i mean you saw what happened to our blue spruce that Mm -hmm. was mature and established we get some pretty fierce wind and if you've got a tree that's that big that can catch that much wind you want to make sure it's staked up well it was interesting that it fell uh, the wind was coming from the other direction, like the the direction that's not as strong in. Mm-hmm. And Nathan was telling us about that, the guy that transplants the trees. He said that they, they actually build a resistance. It's like a muscle mm-hmm. where when the wind keeps blowing from one direction, they build uh, kind of an immunity to, to falling over that direction. But they're weaker the other way because the wind has never been. And that's why you shouldn't stake up your trees for too long. Mm-hmm. Like you should never have your tree staked for, you know, it just years and years because yeah. it weakens them. They mm-hmm. need they need to be building those muscles. Otherwise they kind of atrophy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I thought that was interesting that it, that was why it fell was because we kind of got a freak wind from the other direction Mm -hmm. and we typically don't get winds that strong from that direction. Yeah. Uh, Kara D said, wasn't there a short section of fence in the area of those spruce trees that had Atlas roses, stand by me, clematis and peach colored daylilies around it? Did I possibly forget that they were transplanted? Um, you know, I, I transplanted the stand by me clematis in a video. I can't remember which one, one of the many transplanting videos, uh, the Atlas roses went to a friend's house and so did the daylilies. Um, so I don't film when they come and dig stuff out of the garden only when I do. So, uh, anyway, they all ended up in 
new places. New it homes. would be kind of funny though if you had a friend over and you're like, "I'm going to put a camera." Out. Yeah, do you mind? If I just it's going to film, film you? everything you do. Yeah, <laughs> weird, that would be weird. I would like that. Uh, v said, "Does Bethany raise the pigs for meat, or are they more like pets?" Oh, Aaron, why'd you include that question? <laughs> <laughs> they butcher them, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, that's they a get... normal thing. Your yeah. parents raise cows. Yeah, we well, they get... don't raise cows, but they we get beef from my parents every year, or we buy, we go in on on beef every year, and then we get some of the. I'll tell you Part what, though, two. when you um, have your own beef, like you, mm-hmm. what's it called? Raised grass, and grass feed grass your, fed own, natural, yeah, yeah. your own beef. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's different. It is different. It's so much better. Yeah. Okay, next video lawn tomato update, planting crocus, and gardener supply unboxing. Kind of a mishmash, but I wanted to show you what had happened in our greenhouse when uh, one night the door was open. Neither, so I think, and this is probably one of the questions, but people were asking, like, can't you put an alarm on your greenhouse thermo- you know, thermostat so that you'll know if the temperatures are dropping? Well, we do have that system. And both of us have it turned off on our phone because we get high heat alerts all through the summertime. Um, so it takes We one got so sick of, sick of getting it, yeah. the alerts. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to do in the summertime? Like, yeah. you know, it says 120 yeah, degrees in there. Even, it's like, well... Nothing you can do about there's it. There's no AC, so yeah, it is can, what it is. The walls only go so high and the fans only blow, you know, so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, Anyway, the alarms are set back up now, but anyway, we had the door open. It froze a bunch of my tomatoes. It kind of set back the grass. Everything else in the greenhouse was fine, except for the, my big uh, fiddle leaf fig. I have, I moved it out here from the great room because we put our Christmas tree up in that spot and it was doing great out here. And now it's like, oh, it lost a bunch of leaves. Sure. And I don't know if it'll push new ones. What a bummer. Uh, but I also planted 500 crocus around our back kitchen entrance. I'm going to so excited. I'm going to love that. Um, and then Gardener Supply had sent out the uh, amaryllis, the uh, bird cage, hanging bird cage planters, and the staking thing. <laughs> I'm having a hard time remembering names right now. Um, Mary said, I'm curious, do you keep your am- amaryllis bulbs for the next season or treat them as annuals? I treat them as annuals now because it is a pain in the butt to try to get them to rebloom, and I have 50 50 success with it probably because I just am not diligent enough about the process. So I give them, actually Bethany has taken them before. She'll rehome stuff too. Like if there's things that I have here that I'm like, okay, points out of season is over. I don't really want to keep these as house plants. Bethany will usually find a home for them, which is awesome. So they live on either at Bethany's house or someone else. Tessa said, when do you stop deadheading roses to get hips? I stopped cutting mine after the second flush, but no hips formed. I don't deadhead ours at all. The ones that I want to use for hips, which the Morden blush roses are like the best for hips. They're huge. They're bright red and orange and they hold for a really long time. I just typically just don't touch those plants. And it's interesting because my parents have the same roses. They have Morden blush as well. Monica said she deadheaded them. And I was able to find when I uh, scavenged through their garden, I was able to find two stems with kind of meager looking hips, which are probably from a second flush of bloom. Some roses though just form up better hips naturally than others. So maybe do a little bit of research on variety if you want hips and um, find those that will form the good ones. Uh, Miss Lizzie said, how warm do you keep the Hartley during the winter? Right now, I think it's set at 65. Mm -hmm. It's maintaining and doing really well. And I feel like when I'm in there, the heater's not running the whole time. It's efficient. I've been watching our power bill, Uh um, both gas and electric, and I am blown away at how, like, it hasn't changed since we got that installed. It's... We ran the AC. Like, I, I... almost feel like there's a mistake at the <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like you yeah. don't want to you don't want to like call and be like am i getting charged for this but yeah like yeah everything's it, hooked up to the same meter I, yeah I don't... right yeah i mean i watched them you know connected mm-hmm. in so like i know that it's on the same meter but yeah, you know the louv- louvers or whatever those things mm-hmm. at the top of the hartley they open almost every day because it gets yeah, warm in there. Right. We have a lot of sun during the, the winter. We're lucky that way. Not today, but uh, we're lucky that way that most days those louvers have to open because it's so warm in there just mm-hmm. naturally from the sun. And so the heater doesn't have to work at all. Yeah. It's interesting. I've been told, though, that those mini splits are efficient. Really? Like everybody that ever talks about them, they say that they like them and they say that they um, just like sip energy. So mm. So maybe great. that was a good 
good I call. think it was a good... Not a, doing the ducted in. Yeah. It would have been so nice to have it that way, but maybe more of a, a nightmare trying to keep Did we ever sense. say how much the bid was? For... Yeah, so we got a bid to duct over the 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 heat and the air. We were going to have the... Well, we do have the unit behind our greenhouse, and we um, did have a line. Tra- mm-hmm. I don't know all that went into it, but... But it wouldn't have been all the way. They couldn't have done the duct work that far um, uh-huh. behind the barn they would have had to put it more like by the chicken coop and just to go that distance to trench in like 25 feet just have like normal floor vents like you'd have in a home Mm -hmm. and um the guy called me back and he was like okay so like there's nothing i can do to make the price any better like most of this is material costs like minimum seventy thousand dollars for the heating and cooling and i was like (laughs) what we paid like a tiny fraction of that for the mini split. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. And the units behind the barn. I couldn't even believe it. It's not visible, yeah. which is great. But you see it inside the Hartley. You see the white the mini, unit, the yeah. mini split. Yeah. So that's the trade. But it's, you know, like I'm not paying $70,000 to, well, no. also where would the money come from? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. We didn't have it in the budget to do that anyway. So it didn't really matter. Mini yeah. split is the way we went. Uh, we can paint that. In fact, uh, our heat heating HVAC guy, he was like, yeah, I think you could you could paint that at any point you could have it dipped or whatever i think doing it like gray like a deeper gray would be really nice maybe we'll do that at some point but we use it all the time (laughs) like we'd have to do it in like a real mild part of the fall do much in the fall or spring fall or spring yeah yeah Uh, blake said can you install a door alarm on the greenhouse like my sister has at home so she knows if her kids open a house door we could do a door alarm as well but the thermostat alarm is enough as long as you have it set to on door alarms everywhere we except for the greenhouse everywhere. i know we have alarms it's like the one place uh, yeah. that because i don't know you just kind of figure like what is there i'm not that worried about like prowlers at the greenhouse because you can't like you know. i'd want to go in there and sleep i'd sleep right on that nice little lawn yeah <laughs> in there it's nice and warm uh ruthie said what is the white stuff around the clay pots mold no it's mineral deposits you know terracotta is porous and the water goes you know in and out Oxygen goes in and out and water seeps out and uh, hard water, you know, hard water and minerals. I actually like it. I like that look. Like the messier the terracotta looks, the more I like it. Uh, FZLE Adventures said, did the fig tree in the Hartley get broke off at the top? No, it didn't. It actually started to defoliate. It was fine. It, we moved it out last winter. Um, it was unheated at that point. I think it was unheated. Anyway, we moved it out there. It did great all summer long, even with the AC unit, like right there. And I was worried about it. It it, uh, had a ton of figs on it. Mm -hmm. They were delicious. It was amazing. And then in the fall, it started to yellow and defoliate. It's a Chicago hardy fig. And I I haven't really done a lot of research about it, but I think it's deciduous. Mm. I think it's normal. I think. The plant doesn't look sick. There's no bugs. I've checked the roots. Like, I've rooted around in there to see if there was maybe too much moisture going on, and maybe I was losing leaves because of that. But all the tips, too, where it's lost leaves, they're all flexible, and they all have really bright green buds. So we might be looking at maybe a tree that does not want to be... It needs a vernalization. Sure. Maybe it doesn't want to be in a heated greenhouse. We shall see yeah. what happens with that. I think it's it's healthy though at this point. Okay, so the last video was our Christmas light tour. I was so excited yeah. this year to show you guys. It's quite quite the extensive quite the display. <laughs> display. Um, before we actually did the tour, we had a couple of projects to finish up. One, I got the garland and lights put on the balcony, which really helps on that side, bring a lot of festivity for very minimal effort. I mean, mm-hmm. it takes me what, like less than an hour to get all those things set up up there. Yeah. And it just, it adds a lot. Um, and then you ha- you replaced one of the light strands that had been right. chewed through. And that was the third thing that I've had to replace. And mm-hmm. Paul maybe has even had to replace a couple things. But one thing was uh, a cord got chewed all the way through. Mm-hmm. I just noticed all the trees uh, in on the lane weren't mm-hmm. on. Uh, they just stopped halfway. And I went out there and pulled on the extension cord. It's just weird that they would chew all the way through it. Mm-hmm. Like all the way. Just two pieces. Well. Your mom was your mom saying that squirrels are attracted to copper wire. Is yeah, that right? I know that they are because are they? when I worked at Cable One, they would chew through the cable lines mm. all the time. I saw that Paul uh, put a bunch of like paprika, like no, it's oh, cayenne. Ca- cayenne, yeah. I actually saw. So he used the Scots like battery, the Whiz, the Scots Whiz spreader. Yeah. And I walked by the gator yesterday or the day before, and it was like coated in red, and I thought. What 
what the heck is going on in that? And then he said, he's like, I think I did, I messed up. And he showed me his, his he was just like all oh, kind just of. Oh, poofed everywhere? Yeah, and he, well, he got it on his coat and then he probably did one of these oh, with his coat. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but he's trying his best to keep those squirrels at bay out there. I don't know what the rain does to all of that. Probably just washes oh, it yeah, right it off, away. Does. Anyway. It was an incredible effort on Paul and Bethany's part. You know, Aaron and I did some of the lights and we showed you some of what we did out there, but Paul and Bethany had been working on it for the last few weeks. And mm. I mean, just working hard. And, um, and then I think I mentioned in the video, I don't know that it's their favorite thing to do in the year, but they, they absolutely don't, you would never guess that because they seem to get into it and they have fun, like choosing different colors and stuff and doing like the big orbs in the tree that yeah. Bethany did that was all her you know and it was it's just fun I've got some good ideas for next year I need yeah. to write them down though well, so I we don't talked forget. about them we went on a drive with the kids last night and we looked at Christmas lights and it's so fun doing that but Benjamin still gets really into it and he doesn't care like you know he's got tons of lights to look at here but if a person puts out one strand yeah. He's like, Mama, look at that. They did a great job. Right. I'm he's like, always oh, complimentary. Bless this kid's heart. Like yeah. he doesn't, he just thinks everybody's just doing their best and doing yeah. great. He's always been diplomatic. Have you noticed that? Yes. That like, um, he'll never, he, there's certain things that he, you give him way more comfort than I do. You know, he's a mama's boy, but like, he's always very cautious about like, I love mama and daddy. Yeah. And he'll never, he'll never like exclude somebody. Mm -mm. You know, it's like, I just, I love everybody. Yeah. Except when it comes to putting him down for bed at night. Yeah, but he'll still... He tries every angle to where it, it's me doing it. But even when I ask him, I'm like, do you want do you want mama to put you down every night? He's like, well, uh, just two nights and then you can do two nights. But, but he, he knows that he'll renegotiate yeah, after the two nights. His negotiation when he's doing that, he run, he's like, I have an idea. And he runs and he grabs a coin yeah. and he does a coin toss. If daddy gets three heads, then it's daddy's turn. If mama gets three heads or three tails, it's her turn. But then like, if you win, he's like, okay, wait, wait, let's just talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so we were talking through some ideas and I think it, it'll be different. It'll yeah. be very different next year and very fun. I think keeping it, just changing it up yeah. just keeps it fresh and fun. Okay, Dirt Therapy Garden said, this is stunning. Wonder how long it will take Aaron to decide to set the lights to music. No, that will never happen. No, no flashing lights, no, mu no yeah. music. I just, if you are the person who puts that on your house, that's awesome. I hope you talk to all your neighbors first, <laughs> but I just like, I just don't get any to me, joy out of that. There's a huge difference between flashing lights and just steady yeah. lights. The mm -hmm. flashing ones are like seizure inducing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it personally. You know, it's fun though. I mean, you have to agree that seeing those displays every once in a while the kids think it's they get a kick out yeah, of it well the thing though is that it can be done well and it can be done really poorly it I've needs seen to be both. on a timer as well yeah <laughs> i don't know what the difference is i just i just know that i've seen some where you're like oh that's a cool display and then i've seen others where it's like similar they're doing the music and the flashing and stuff but i'm like this is bad i just it does nothing for me, mm -hmm. but some, some are cool. Like yeah. I, I have been impressed by a few. Yeah. I just don't want it in my own yard. <laughs> yeah. I always, I wonder like, cause I thought about it. My grandparents happened to have a house right next to him, but my grandpa really likes the, his neighbors and like they chat, they sit with each other and chat all the time. So he doesn't mind at all. And they they've got a pretty thick uh, arb hedge between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that my grandparents are actually affected by the light. Um, <clears throat> But I wondered when they started putting that up, like if they actually went to their neighbors and like if a neighbor come to, came to me and was like, I want to put one of these up. Are you good for good with it? Inside, I'd be going like, no, I'm not good with yeah. it. But then I would say, yeah, that's fine. I probably wouldn't say anything because I want them to enjoy it too. That's the thing. Right. Everybody enjoys different things. Right. And you don't want to squash it right. either. So yeah. I guess just do you, but probably not in our yard. <laughs> <laughs> at any point. Uh, Paulette said, how did Bethany make those orbs for the tree? It looks magical. Um, she got two hanging basket. We have tons of hanging baskets now. If we ever want to do a hanging basket display, um, she got two hanging baskets, took the liners out of them and then zip tied them together like in a orb and then just wrap lights around them and zip tied the lights on really simple. Then they hung them with some metal S hooks from the tree branches and just ran an extension cord to each one of them. The infrastructure is kind of intense on something like that, especially if you want to get them high. Um, but it sure looks pretty. 
Wanda said, are you still planning on taking the lights off the Hartley and just having a Christmas tree? No, we're not gonna take the lights all the way off the Hartley. In fact, in the video that you are gonna see of me doing the tree in the Hartley, I showed you what it looks like both ways. So I turned the lights off and started the tour, showed you what the tree looks like glowing from you know the inside. And then I went out and I turned them on just so you could see the tree is holding its own, whether or not those lights are on um, or not. So I'm thankful for that. So since we went to the work of putting them up, we'll leave them up. And it does look, I mean, do you think, Erin, it kind of, since there's so many lights around, it almost looks too dark not to have the Hartley lit. Yeah. Like we would have to figure out the, the up light thing right. or figure out a way that we could bring a lot of light around it so that it's highlighted and, oops, instead of looking like, like a hole in the display. Sure. It might not matter for what we're going to do next year. Rhonda said, do you take down all the lights after Christmas or leave some up all year? We do not leave any lights up throughout the year. They all come down. Um, Pisces. January. January is when they End come down. February. Yeah. Yeah, on nice days. Yeah. The house lights stay up the longest because, you know, you want to make sure the roof is good and clear before you're up there. Uh, next question. Did you see Cheddar on the roof? That was Russell. Well, they both get on the roof. They can climb up the maple trees and then there's and the birch and then there's a couple branches that are close enough they just jump onto the roof. They uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> Those cats are everywhere. <laughs> it's funny. I'll be getting ready in the morning and all of a sudden Russell and it's an upstairs bathroom. All of a sudden Russell's face is like right in the window, right where I'm at. Uh, Kristen said, "Is it typical for America that your Christmas lights are so tacky?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious about this question because I've seen it happen before. Americans here in Europe also make everything so naively colorful. Well, you sound like just a most positive person. <laughs> um, we like to have things festive and fun and, and not every single year. And there was probably a time where I maybe would have felt a little bit more like that. It's grown on you. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I don't know. There's some people who like it and some, I mean, some people go to the work of, you know, the displays that are flash. Yeah. You know? And if you um, don't like it, don't do it at your house. Yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, Philip said, would you ever consider installing solar panels somewhere on your property or on the roof of one of your structures? We actually had a bid this year. Yeah, right. To have that done, because we could put... Well, I, no, we, we can't don't, put we any don't in have the barn, because yeah. they need to face south. south. Yeah, and so we... I, I do not like the look of solar panels on homes. I like the idea of like the Tesla solar roof. I don't know how well it works. And there maybe there's other companies that are doing like shingle, you know, looking solar panels. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like, you know, needs to happen is that the, they need to look like shingles. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just not a fan of, of actually seeing, seeing the panels. The other thing is that, you know, you could, we could do standalone panels mm -hmm. where we just like put them out on, maybe like on the new pasture that we mm -hmm. bought. But the problem is they'd be really visible and it would take up a bunch of space. And I'm also, I'm a little on the fence. I've seen so much stuff recently about how you can't really recycle solar panels. Mm. So like, and they have about a 20 year life. So what, you like mine all this stuff, create the solar panels, and then you just throw them away after 20 years? Also, does it even pay for itself in 20 years? Well, it like, yeah. How? So, supposedly. Be because it was a crazy What was it, like $70,000? No, it was or... it was over a hundred. Yeah, maybe it was. It was like $111,000. It, it was kind of like to the point where I was like, Like, eh, that's kind of, mm -mm. I'm not really going to look into it any farther. But yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. So you have the expense of it. I know that, you know, in our area, solar does work pretty mm -hmm. well because we have a lot of sun. And we don't get a lot of cloud cover. So that's great. But I'm still just like, I don't know the long-term viability of solar panels. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really that great for the environment to to create these solar panels and then just throw them into a landfill? Like, like maybe in a, in a few years we'll be hearing the negative. Like, yeah, everybody right. did it's like this. We just and... We're just not far enough into it. Like, it's not, people aren't talking about the negative aspects of mm -hmm. it. So, and maybe I'm wrong about it. I just, it just seems kind of... Like, you just don't know all the answers mm -hmm. yet. So anyway, that's where we're at. Just got to learn more about it, I yeah. guess. Uh, J. L. Pressler said, perhaps a few designated weekend drive throughs for public. Also, has a local news ever featured your display on TV? I think we would probably say no to both. <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. So I think what would happen is that if we, if we opened it up, one, we would have to, like, advertise our address, which is kind of weird. You know, people can find where we live. Yeah. I, you can find like anybody. Yeah. You can find where anybody lives. I don't think that that's really something that you can stop, but it, it is a little bit weird when you're like advertising, encouraging it. it. Yeah. And encouraging it. And then 
people are people. And the thing is that 99% are normal, sweet, awesome people. Mm -hmm. But it's that 1%. And sometimes when you're dealing with a thousand people, then you got 10 weird ones. (laughs) So... And they're the type of people who are like, hey, we missed, you know, I know this isn't the day that we're supposed to go through, but do you mind? And they'll like knock on your door. Yeah, and, put you, you know, out in the spot a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just weird, weird stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so. We like to keep our guard up, you know, we yeah, do. It's, it's tough. It's like anything else. You, you get kind of like burned a couple times and then you start say, okay, well now we need to put these you know, barriers in place mm-hmm. to protect ourselves. So we just don't and, even want to go there. Yeah. We it's, just, yeah. But I really want to. Honestly, like a dream of mine would be to run some type of like a botanical garden that was mm. open to the public. Uh-huh. I think that would be awesome. And to light it up at, you know, during mm-hmm. the holidays, I think that would be the best. I wish we could do that with our house. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how to marry the two. Yeah. Like, you how can't we can live somewhere live, yeah. and make it public. We would have to start somewhere new. But that's like, you know, where are you going to do that? Yeah. And mm-hmm. That'd be a huge undertaking. I mean, it'd be like life changing if we were going to ever attempt something like that. Mm-hmm. So there you go. No, well, you never know. Yeah. Yep. And that's it, you guys. That was the last question for this week's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. We've got another busy week of stuff going on. And the rain does look like it's letting up just a little bit. So I might be able to start attempting my big decorating project that I'm excited to share with you guys because I've been working on it for the last couple weeks so anyway thank you for watching thank you gardener supply for um sponsoring this video and you guys have a great week we'll see you in the next one bye